Hello, it's Pookie and Buddy, of course, as always. Now, today's video is a quick one, and it's for parents or teachers who are worried about a child who's struggling with anxiety. Um, it's in response to a query from someone who asked, what are some simple things that I can do because I'm concerned about my child and I don't know how to help? So I'm going to just share four really basic ideas. We'll expand on these and explore more in other videos, but hopefully this will give you a start of a 10. Um, so the first thing, and I say this about everything all the time, the first thing is to listen. Just stop and listen. Let the child, let the young person talk to you. Allow them to explore their story. Allow them to tell you how they're feeling, when and why, how this feels physically, how this feels emotionally, what are the kind of things that are triggering it. Just let them get it out. Let them explore it and just yeah give them a little bit of your time this isn't a time for you to try and problem solve or try and fix it it's just a time for them to get it out and for you both to begin to understand the problem a little bit better secondly um you want to begin to encourage the, your child the young person you're working with to question the thoughts and feelings that they're experiencing so commonly when we experience anxiety there may be a reason for it but it might not be a valid reason if that makes sense so we begin to, to question these thoughts and these feelings as I come they come into our mind and they kind of drive our emotional and physical state and we say is this feeling true is it accurate is the way the thing I'm worrying about likely to happen as these thoughts as these feelings come into their mind they begin to question the validity of them the next thing you want to do is to take a really practical approach and again listening to them as they talk through maybe a typical day and try and work out within that day what are the trigger points when are the moments that things that start to go wrong which are the moments that cause anxiety or panic to happen when we can begin to isolate that it's with when you're with a certain person you're in a certain place it's in the lead up to a certain activity then we can begin to understand whether these are things that we can do something about whether we need to be addressing our feelings about them whether we might avoid them although we have to be careful because sometimes avoiding stuff can make it kind of loom larger in our mind and we don't address the crux of the issue but some things we might want to avoid it might be that um, a certain person is a really bad influence on on us or our child um, and so we might suggest maybe spending less time with that person so having to think about what are the triggers and what might we be able to do about them even just understanding what those triggers are can really give a bit of a sense of kind of empowerment and boost our self-esteem and confidence somehow and that is a, a real kind of help when we are trying to um, yeah boost our confidence and reduce our anxiety Finally, um, and this is a slightly more long-term approach, you can work with the child to think about things that they can do that help them to feel soothed and calm. Um, now, we can't do this at the point at which anxiety is raging because we can't do anything at that point. We are incapable of thinking of anything other than fight, flight, freeze. What we need to do is during a time of calm, when we're having a nice time together, have a think about what things make me feel good? What are some simple things that I can do that might help me feel calmer during times of anxiety? These might be things like, you might explore breathing techniques. Some people like to write or to draw or to sing or to listen to music it really doesn't matter it's absolutely up to you and your child and what works for them but the important thing is to practice these things to have a go at them when you're feeling okay and calm so then you can put them into place at moments when either you're beginning to feel anxious or you're worried that you might so going back a step thinking about our triggers then we can begin to then put those two things together so for example we might have identified that um, I always feel anxious on a Wednesday afternoon because I know I've got games coming up. So I might have discovered that I can make myself feel calm by doing colouring and listening to my favourite Ed Sheeran album. And so I might decide that every Wednesday lunchtime I'm going to do some colouring and listening to my favourite album in order to help me feel prepared and less anxious ahead of the thing that I'm anxious about that afternoon. So you see how it kind of begins to tie together. Um, uh, whistle stop tour again I hope it's a few helpful ideas I will happily expand share more ideas in another video um, let me know what you want always happy to respond and also still very very new to this um, please like please comment and please subscribe I'm still working on the whole pointy finger thing please subscribe <laughs>